You're tuned in to the Death Metal Chronicle show, and I just poured myself a little bit of a louder scotch. I think I about had, I don't know, half a bottle today or so. You know, play has got to play. Today is Wednesday, September the 24th, and holy shit, in the news today, Linux finally got Netflix support after... Seven years of fucking Netflix being around. So I guess that's kind of cool. Got some buddies that are in Iraq. Got a couple of buddies that are in Afghanistan right now. They've got some words. And uh, I've, today's episode is by Carly Catastrophe. And you guys can go on her website, which is... CarlyCatastrophe.JamBerryNails.net And so if you're a dude or you're a lady or if you got a significant other that likes jewelry, uh, my friend Carly makes uh, awesome jewelry and she is a wounded warrior and you should probably buy her stuff instead of going to some silly place in the mall. Uh, she makes her own jewelry. She'll hook you up. She's got some awesome things. Um, yeah, so hope you guys enjoy that. It's been a very, very interesting past couple of months. I have not had an episode in a while. For the reason that this guy has been unemployed. And I've been looking for work for a while. Uh, I thought I had a gig in Afghanistan. Didn't exactly happen. So, to that, uh, louder scotch. Oh, man. That is some young, young scotch. So, I don't know about y'all, but I am really interested in new technology. Uh, Logan at Tech Syndicate had a pretty interesting video post that he did. Is the THL Tango 6 Sierra good? So, this phone is a $90 Android phone. It's quad-core has Android 4.4, has a 5-inch IPS screen. Um, it only works on the 2Gs and the 3Gs, so it doesn't get 4G LTE. If you live in an area which I live in, in the fucking woods, I don't have the 4Gs. Uh, 4G doesn't work. Hell, 2G doesn't even work. I have to use the internet just to make phone calls. Um, so this phone's really cool. So if, you, if you're working out in BFE nowhere, or you're in Afghanistan, or Iraq, or Libya, or wherever the hell you're at, you want a legit phone, it's going to work, it's going to be pretty friggin' awesome, and can support a friggin' SD card, I would get the DHL. Um, there's also one that has a 5,000 milliamp battery, which basically means that you can use that thing for like three days straight without charging it it's i don't know what the grams are on it and how heavy it is but you totally should get it because it sounds freaking awesome Five thousand milliamp batteries that is epic my phone now has a 1600 milliamp battery i have a motorola atrix hd it's all right it's an older phone it's pretty decent but the issue is that it barely lasts i have to use a power brick and charge it like pretty much Every night I have to charge a thing. So uh, I can't really use it for longer than a couple hours. This phone, uh, the THL T6 Sierra, has a 1900 milliamp battery. So they said that the talk time is about four hours. Um, the standby time is about 72. I, I believe that. It sounds pretty good. Um, my only beef with the THL is the fact that you may not be able to use Sanogen Mod or like Omni ROM or anything like that. So basically, that's just a you know a clean ROM that you can put on your phone. You find a nerd friend that knows how to do it, unlock the bootloader, root the thing, throw on a new operating system. The issue with obviously with that is it's not as open source as it should be. So it's it's kind of an issue. Um, I'm not exactly excited about that. So Netflix is finally available on Ubuntu. 
Now I have not looked into Arch Linux or um, Mint or uh, OpenSUSE, but good news, the fact that native Netflix is finally available. So what that means is you can go to ubuntu.com, U-B-U-N-T-U.com. All you gotta do is take a USB, put that in your computer, download Ubuntu, install it on the freaking USB, put it in whatever computer that you want to put it on, upload it, install it, put that operating system on there, new operating system, you have complete control over whatever you want to do, you can make it entirely a media server or some sort of media device. So you just want to have all your audio, all your video, Netflix on there, and it's just a TV like I have, where I have a 32-inch TV and a, and a big computer tower. I put Ubuntu on it. I don't have Netflix on there now. I don't need it yet. I haven't used it. But the fact that you can just put that on there and make any device you want to a Netflix device. How freaking epic is that? Um, and finally, Linux got that. Um, this was August the 10th that on OMG Ubuntu put this article out. So it's been a couple of weeks so far, and I haven't heard really anything negative um, about U Ubuntu having Netflix. What I would expect is that since it's HTML5 and not Java, that you should be able to get better download times, better uptime. So, you know, since Java constantly dies, this should be a little bit better and not give you so much crap. So, it's kind of cool. And you don't have to, you know, wrestle with wine or wrestle with some sort of, you know, BS uh, plugin or something like that and try to use it with, you know, Windows and everything at the same time. So, that's kind of cool. I was really, uh, really happy about that. And it, it seemed uh, pretty sweet that you don't have to really worry about how, uh, how things work, you know. So, I've got some buddies for the Unsung Heroes of War segment. These guys are deployed. These guys may be your buddies. These guys may be friends that you know who don't really have a voice. So, you know, a lot of them are soldiers, a lot of them are contractors. Some of these people have clearances. Some of these guys aren't allowed to be in the public, so they're in the Young Sung Heroes of War uh, section. So, my buddy Ranger Speaks, his segment is... <laughs> he gave me this awesome uh, photo. We would like to thank the American taxpayers for our new weapons. Sincerely, Al-Qaeda. I mean, Syrian rebels. <laughs> Don't even know where to start when it comes to America's foreign policy. Nobody could be this incompetent. I am forced to assume that Obama's foreign policy has been to cast the entire world, particularly the Middle East, into turmoil. Why evil? Pure evil. <laughs> Obrock Banana is yet a continuation of the Bushes. See Wesley Clark with his admission that we have been plotting the taking down most of the Middle East since before 1911, or 9-11. Uh, and so he posted uh, this, uh, this video about uh, Wesley Clark, and uh, you guys can watch that uh, as secondary if you'd like. Everything is going according to plan, just like Bush started it. So I asked my buddy, if America were to have a new president, who would that person be and what qualities would they have? And his comment was, ISIS is not Islamic. It's in their name, big dummy. <laughs> Some recent gems. <laughs> the Islamic State is not Islamic, according to Barry. His comment on it, uh, you know, if we were to have a, uh, a new president, you know, we, we need a citizen statement, statesman, not a politician, a 
patriot, someone who believes in God and country, someone who respects the Constitution and the rule of law, someone who will restore the love of country and put America and Americans first. First, capitalized, respects our form of government, a constitutional republic, not a democracy. And he linked to the Madison Project, which I'm not familiar with, so we'll read, all read this and maybe get some new thoughts. We the people, a constitutional republic, not a democracy. Here's a slightly modified version of last year's Constitution Day post. Today we celebrate the 216th anniversary of the signing of the United States Constitution. On this day, it is imperatively reflect the importance of our Constitution and celebrate the roots of our founding. As our nation comes under attack from the forces of tyranny, th tyranny within, we must reaffirm our commitment to the ideas of our founders and founding documents. Most people often mistakenly refer to our nation as the greatest democracy on earth. They are mistaken, because we are not an absolute democracy, we are a constitutional republic. This is what makes our nation great. For, if we were merely a democracy, we would be anything but great. And the extent that we have no longer function as a constitutional republic, that greatness is rapidly ebbing away. Why did we need a constitution? Why are popular elections not a sufficient means of preserving liberty? A pure, unbridled democracy is a political system in which the majority enjoys absolute power by means of democratic elections. It is unvarnished democracy, unrestrained by a constitution. The majority can vote to impose tyranny on themselves and the minority opposition. When they can vote to elect those who will infringe upon the inalienable God to give them rights. So, yeah, it's pretty sweet. And they kind of go on a little bit further. You guys can, can read that. Um, I agree with the first part of it. It's kind of sweet. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with the whole premise, but, yeah. It's kind of cool. I asked Ranger Speece if he wanted to become president. He said no, because he has too many skeletons. So we'll just leave it at that. Ranger Speaks gets to do his thing behind the scenes and affect foreign policy in a different way. So you guys can uh, enjoy that. <laughs> My buddy will be known as the Crazy Asian or... The most badass Asian guy who's an Intel dude, or the mutt within who is your favorite CI guy that is not a CI guy, but we'll say that. His only comment <laughs> to what I've asked him was about the foreign policy of Obama is that Obama helped you, ISIS. Simple as that. Problem solved. Rangers lead the way. That's all you get. <laughs> So good. <laughs> so as our uh, secondary part of Unsung Heroes of War, my buddy who I've been in contact with for, I don't know, about four years or so while I've been uh, doing my dirty contracting thing, he is in Iraq and he's not a United States citizen. He is a citizen of an Eastern European country. And he is currently on the ground in Iraq right now, running missions, doing stuff, protecting people, things like that. And I find it interesting that the consistent problem with Iraq or issue when it comes to getting Americans in there or other, I mean, other people other than Iraqis is the fact that their, their process for visas has always been very uh, problematic. And so... Right now, Iraq is allowing Eastern Europeans and the British to go into their country freely, very easily, and things like that. Now, to work there. So my issue with that is the fact that there's a ton of Americans who want to go there and help and do what they can to affect the situation and do what they can do to help people. Yet their visa process is just completely, utterly just insane. It literally takes nine months to get a visa. And by the time that you finally get it, probably your company doesn't have the contract anymore and then you're done. Um, Iraq 
does need help. And I, though I agree with them in the sense that they probably shouldn't uh, just allow Americans to come in there freely because of all the issues that they've had, I don't necessarily agree with it being uh, such a visa problem. Although, in America, we have the same problem. We live in a society in which the United States government says, well, only these certain types of people can come here, white people, and only certain white people from certain areas. So, if you're from Chechnya, or you're from you know, BFE Russia, or you're from whatever, you can't come to America. Well, was Thomas Jefferson or the original founding people even citizens? Did they have passports? Look that up. If you can tell me if the original founding fathers had passports or visas, let me know. I'd like to hear your theory on that, because I'm pretty sure they didn't. So, I'm fairly excited for the next contract to go on. Been looking at some different stuff. Hoping I can get out to Africa. That would be pretty sweet. Uh, there's a bunch of new stuff kicking off. I think it'd be pretty badass to get out there. Um, I've never been to Africa before. I'd really like that. It'd be kind of sweet. Just be a little bit different. Do a little new stuff. Um, I think it'd be pretty epic. I don't know about you guys, but I like to support people who are really trying to help veterans and contractors. So if you can go on Facebook and slash groups slash ARM house. So Alpha Romeo M house. I don't even know what M is anymore. Well, I've been out of the game for a while. It's been a couple of months. Uh, ARM house as an arm house. This is a veterans slash community uh, group that helps out as many people as they can. And they're supporting a veteran shelter called the Valor Home in Lorraine, which is a suburb of Cleveland. If you don't know, basically in the Midwest and Northeast, there are zero veteran shelters. The Veterans Affairs Program does not support the homeless. Let me repeat, they do not support the homeless. If you're a homeless person and you have the Veterans Affairs, they will turn you around and say, go fuck yourself. Pretty much, that's their whole thing. They don't give a shit. They just get money off the public and give it out as they wish. Uh, so, ARM, founded by a pastor that I know, um, and tons of people from the Cleveland and Detroit Chicago area um, are trying to get a 30 bed house uh, shelter started and it's going to be in, in a suburb of Cleveland and they need your help. Um, please go to Facebook slash groups slash arm house and donate. If you can't donate your money, donate your time. Come down here to Cleveland, help them out. Do what you can to support this because there are no shelters literally in a 300 to 500 mile radius of the Northeast area. I I can't name any. There's barely any in Pittsburgh. There's definitely none out in uh, South uh, New York. I can't name any. And these are the only people that are really helping veterans. And uh, if you want to donate your time or your help, please support them. Uh, they need your help. Also, check out Kerry Patton. Um, I forget what his website is. Let's check this out. I like Kerry Patton. He's pretty friggin' awesome. Uh, Kerry dash Patton, P A T T O N dot com. Kerry Patton is a pretty awesome guy. He's a voice of reason for contractors and military guys um he's been on soft rep he's put out a couple of books contracted one through three <laughs> i haven't read contracted two yet <laughs> i listened to the audiobook of contracted one um he's got uh two newborns i think it's newborn uh, uh twins um 
please pray for him and go on his website and help support him and his family. Uh, and his family. So, support them and kind of do what you can to uh, help his family. He's a pretty cool guy. That has been Death Metal Chronicles. I hope you guys have had an awesome weekend. To the next contract that you get, cheers. Oh!